So what is energy? Well, since nobody's answering. <laughs> Uh, one might say energy is to get up and go, needed to get up and do. I'm not sure my physics professor, when, with whom I majored in math and physics back in college, whether he would have been pleased with that answer. But I still like it, and I'll take responsibility for it. Webster's Dictionary tells us that energy is the capacity for taking action or doing work. Its very close relative is power, which Webster also says is the ability to take action and produce an effect. Case closed. Energy is to get up and go needed to get up and do it. <laughs> no matter what my professor thinks. One night recently when I arrived home, I get up and go, and gotten up and gone. <laughs> so I was out of energy and I went to bed to restore my energy. Energy comes in many forms. Every now and then I think of my grandmother Kimball, you've heard her name before. That's where I got my name from. She used to have a grandfather's clock which tongue-in-cheek she called the grandmother's clock. <laughs> did I say grandfather's clock? I did, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. And she called it the grandmother's clock. It nearly reached the ceiling and it had these large, heavy iron weights hanging off of chains inside the wooden cabinet underneath the clockworks. Every several days, someone had to pull the chain to raise the weights so their downward movement and pull would provide the energy, that's that word energy, to do the work of keeping the clock ticking. I'm talking. <laughs> My dad was a mechanical engineer. I remember his explanation to me that the energy from my muscles pulling on those chains and raising those weights became the kind of energy stored in those weights whose downward pull transformed into mechanical energy to work the clock's machinery, causing the hands of the clock to move around. I was putting my muscles' energy into the workings of that clock. Interesting transference. Without my energy, the clock would have soon stopped. My get up and go through a chain of connections made it possible for the clock to get up and do. <laughs> Energy comes in many forms, including electrical, mechanical, solar, atomic, heat, even potential. Energy is when energy is stored away until it's needed like the electrical charge in a storage battery, or the water that's held back by a huge dam of a river until a controlled release can turn the massive turbines to generate electricity. The Bible has many things to say about energy and power also. Still relates to my, my definition of to get up, to <laughs> get up and go, necessary to get up and do. The Bible is all about the energy and power of God, the energy of God's action in our lives, infusing our lives, infusing our world. Recorded in First Chronicles that Jackie just read, King David of ancient Israel acknowledges the great power and life energy of God infused constantly into our lives. <clears throat> Hear David's way of saying what I've been trying to say. Blessed are thou, O Lord. Yours is the greatness and the power and the glory. Think of it when we say the Lord's Prayer today. Thine is the kingdom or the reign of God and the power and the glory forever and ever. We're quoting King David, in a sense, or Jesus was. 
The idea is the same. And then David goes on to say, For all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. In your hand are power and might. And in your hand it is to make great and give strength to all. To transfer that energy into people of faith. All things come from you, David said, and of your own have we been able to give. After all, who has given you and me the gift of life itself? And has the power and the energy to sustain it? For David, without God providing with us with energy for living, we'd have no energy to give. Our daily energy to get up and go is a gift from God, which makes it possible for us to get up and do. We get up and do things to thank God for it all day. Every day to praise and thank God by the way we live our lives. The way we live is our thank you note to the one who gives us the ability to be alive. For us who find it easy to appreciate the energy in physical things like clocks, and engines, and electricity, things like spiritual energy and power seem a bit more abstract, more difficult to measure and to explain. But nonetheless, I'd suggest that religious faith is the most powerful form of energy that any of us possess for living our lives and living them well. The energy stored away in religious faith, when it's released, has been known to defy guns and ammunition. It has been known to turn back mobs and to quell riots. It has been known to inspire movements for human rights and many movements to, uh, to right conditions that are perceived to be socially unjust. It has been known to discourage na nations from using nuclear weapons. Many of these by virtue of what people deeply believed in their hearts to be spiritually true about the meaning of life. By virtue of what we deeply believe in our hearts to be spiritually true about the meaning of life. Discoveries of ancient records and stories around the world bear witness to the central importance to human society of religious energy in the form of faith. However, as it seems to be with most if not all things we discover, Religious energy and power, as indispensable as they are, can be used in one situation for good and in another situation for ill. We need look no further than the headlines in our daily newspaper to know that religious energy has both produced hospitals and schools, countless other life-giving, life-affirming resources for the lives of people, while religious energy has also produced violence and destruction. There is always an ethical, moral decision as to how to apply our religious faith. This growing concern about the moral use of religious energy during this decade, past decades and so forth, inspired uh, Lloyd Stephan, a professor of religious studies at Lehigh University, if he's still there, in Pennsylvania, uh, he wrote a book titled The Demonic Turn, The Power of Religion to Inspire or Restrain Violence. Jesus is more than clear about how religious energy is to be faithfully used when he directs us to use it in the following ways. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And what that means, to figure out how to translate that into everyday living. And then also, love your neighbor as yourself. When you focus your life on doing those things, you'll find your religious energy, your get up and go, 
your spiritual get up and go, will be wonderfully inspired to seek out ways to get up and do just those kinds of things that are faithful to God and to neighbor. You'll experience an attitude that will change your perception of many things. There's an old story of a donkey who fell into a well and his owner, the farmer, had no way to lift him out and couldn't see him in the very bottom. So he gave up. He figured the donkey had, was deceased and so they were providing an appropriate, a proper burial, as they, and he and a friend uh, filled the, the well with uh, earth. When they were nearly finished, they looked over the edge and to their wonderment, there was the donkey, almost ready to step up and out of his entrapment for each shovel that hit his back. He shook it off and he stepped up. <laughs> Eventually, he stepped up and out and over the edge and trotted off. That's the way the story is told. Religious energy, when properly used, gives us a whole new perspective on our troubles and our problems, and when dirt lands on our back, we learn to shake it off, and we learn from it something, and take a step up, because our life is full of grace. Second chance, third chance, another chance. Each of our troubles become stepping stones, if we have that perspective. One last story is about Tom Reese, who tells of the trip he took to London, some hundred miles from his home. He, he stopped in at a shop to make several purchases that were carefully wrapped, gift wrapped for him. And after the store clerk had gone to all of this trouble, Tom reached into his pocket and his wallet wasn't there. Embarrassed by the work of the clerk that had been done and by his inability to pay, he apologized and said, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to ask you to unwrap all of those packages and put them back on the shelves. I came all the way to London without any money. So he had a long list of other things he had hoped to do, but couldn't do any of them without his wallet, so he went home with a heavy heart and full of disappointment. When he got home, he went right to his room to collect his wallet from the suit he had worn the previous day, previous and then a feeling of panic came along because it was missing. It wasn't there either. He said, I must have been robbed. But then as he ran his hands over the coat that he had been wearing all day, he discovered the wallet in his jacket pocket. It had been with him all day. He had taken it to London. He had never lost it at all. He had carried it into that shop earlier in the day. He carried it all the way home again. He has summarized thoughts about all of this is in the following reset, uh, reflection. He says, why was my trip to London so fruitless that day? Why did I behave as though I was penniless? It was not because I did not have any money. I had nearly 20 pounds. No, the reason was simply this. I didn't know I had it. I think it's often that way with our religious energy. It often does not get used because we don't know we have it. We don't know that it's there. What? God has an important purpose and task for me today? That just couldn't be. I'm not all that religious or I don't read the Bible all that much. I don't have any spiritual gifts to give. I don't have any great spirit get up and go in order to get up and do what God wants me to do each day because a lot of it is not always easy. And the only thing I can say is, yes you do have the energy. You just don't know you have it if you don't think you do. Because God gives to every one of us the energy for life and plenty of spiritual energy and direction to go with it. We just don't always know we have it. And so we live each day, day to day, as if we didn't have it. But we do. That's the good news. 
and it's the gospel truth as I read it. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for gifting all of us with the energy to do according to your call upon us. Help us to be aware of your presence in our lives and your call. And then confidence and faith that we have the energy to follow and fulfill your call. Help us to know we do have it because you've given it. That we may then give it to others and pass it on. Amen.